If you think back to when you purchased your current tripod and, and what are the things that you, you thought about when you were making this purchase? For me personally, the, there was really, I guess, four things that I paid attention to. One, of course, is the price. The, the second is you know, how, how light the tripod is, or how much the tripod weighs. Then, of course, how tall the tripod is. You know, I'm six foot two. I want to make sure that the tripod at least comes up to my, my eye level, if not a little bit higher. And then the last but not least thing is you know, how sturdy it is. And what's interesting about the sturdiness of a tripod is it's not something that you can really determine online. You know, you can definitely read reviews, but it's something that you really have to have uh, in your hands to try out to see how sturdy it is. But there's something very interesting about all of it that all of this that is uh, completely missed. Now, if you think about it, when it comes to the, the sturdiness of a tripod, a tripod can really only be as sturdy as the way it is mounted to the earth or how it is mounted to the ground. It's something I never paid much attention to. I paid more attention to, you know, how heavy of a camera could I put on it? Could I bend the tripod legs? you know, how strong and how sturdy it is. But if you think about it, it can only be as sturdy as how it is actually mounted to the earth, how it's mounted to the ground. And it's something that uh, I never really paid much attention to until my most recent workshop in the Lofoten Islands in Norway that I just came back from. Now, during this workshop, not only was it just insanely windy almost the entire time. I mean, the, the winds in, uh, in Norway, especially the Lofoten Islands, they are no joke. It was almost always a minimum sustained winds of between 20 and 30 miles an hour. And one evening, the gusts were well above hurricane force, 75 80 miles an hour right along the coastline. It's no joke. It's super, super windy there. But one of the most common questions I got from the participants in the workshop was not so much about composition or camera settings or things like that. It had to do with the specific components of my tripod that I was using. And I found that to be really, really interesting because I don't often get a lot of comments about my tripod, but it really got me thinking about this very specific aspect of the tripod that I was using. And that's really the purpose of this week's video. I wanted to make this quick episode all about the, the tripod accessories, the things that attach to my tripod that I find the most critical. I, mean, I don't want to use the word critical. It sounds a little uh, dramatic, but these are the things that I find insanely important to my workflow that really make my life a lot easier when I'm on location and also anchors my tripod to the ground in the most secure and most, um, I guess, um, acceptable. I'm trying to think of some kind of fancy way to say this, which is not needed, but just in the most efficient way possible in order to create those crisp and sharp uh, landscape photos. So the most common question I got on my workshop had to do with the types of feet that I had attached to my tripod. Now, when you purchase a tripod, at least every tripod I've ever purchased, they always come with, let me swap this around here, these kind of rubber feet right here. And these, they, they don't attach, they don't really grab a hold of the ground at all. They literally just sit on top of the whatever surface you happen to be photographing on. But but every tripod I've ever purchased always comes with these rubber feet and they just are, aren't super robust or anything. They're not grippy at all. They don't grab a hold of the ground. And I guess they're okay in scenarios where there's literally no wind at all and it's very, very still, which isn't often the case when it comes to, to outdoor photography. Now the tripod feet that I have on almost all the time and that I got the most questions about are these style right here. These are these kind of claw feet right here. And these are, in my opinion, are the best for the most types of surfaces. So whether you're photographing on rocks or rocks that have moss on them or, or wet rocks, or maybe you're photographing on moss or pine straw, or dirt or ice or snow, whatever the case is, these are usually going to be pretty good and they're much more substantial or much more grippy than the rubber ones. So I had so many questions about these during that workshop as to, you know, what these are, what's the purpose of them, how do they work, how much are they, and, uh, and you know, what's the, I guess, the overall point of it. But they're, I think they're called claw feet. They're made from a bunch of different people or a bunch of different manufacturers. I use this one from Photo Pro here. But I think, um, you know, Really Right Stuff makes, there's a ton of different companies out there. Uh, the ones from Really Right Stuff are really, really expensive. I probably wouldn't recommend going for those, but look for a, a, another set. I think these ones from, from Frodo Pro are around $30, which is pretty good. So about $10 a piece. But these claw feet is something that I would highly recommend you think about purchasing and swapping out on your tripod, getting rid of these rubber ones, or not getting rid of them, but just, just removing the rubber ones and replacing them with these uh, kind of claw feet. I think you're going to find very, very beneficial. Now, before I talk about the other tripod accessories, I want to kind of wrap up the, the, the different types of tripod feet that I use. Now, these spikes right here, these are pretty popular. I see a lot of people using these. Now, these are not the type
types of, this is what it looks like on the actual, or at least on my tripod here. But these spikes, these are not something that you want to use on all surfaces. So you're not going to want to use these when you're photographing uh, on rocks or things like that. You need to be fo focusing, you need to be photographing on something that these things can kind of pierce into. So, um, you know, kind of soft ground or, or pine straw or moss or sand or maybe snow, for instance, things that you can kind of jab your tripod into and really, really hold it tight. But these things work absolutely fantastic. And when you can, when you're, when you're photographing on that type of a scenario that you can get these into the earth, these things here will keep your, uh, your tripod absolutely rock solid. So these are a good thing to have as well. Like I said though, these have limitations. Those claw feet, those in my experience, can work on pretty much any surface. These right here can work on pretty much any surface that's not super solid like rocks or stones or things like that. It, these have to be used when you can pierce these into the ground, but these are also very, very helpful to have. And a good thing to have as well, when you're going to a location like that, where you, excuse me, where you know that these will help anchor your tripod into the ground. Now the last component to the different types of tripod feet that I use, and it's something that um, I don't really see many people using, I don't see many people talking about, but it's these right here. Now these look similar to skiers poles right here, but you attach them with the spike. So the spike actually goes through here and attaches to your tripod like this right here. Hopefully you can see that. But what makes this absolutely fantastic is, you know, how many times have you been photographing seascapes and whether you're using the rubber feet that your tripod came with, or maybe you're using spikes and you jam the tripod into the sand and it's holding it tight but every time the wave comes in and out past your tripod your tripod sinks lower and lower and lower and lower in about 20 minutes your tripod is no longer you know five feet above the sand now you're about three feet above the sand you got to pull it out of the sand again and start the process over but what this does is, is it uh, <laughs> is it enables you to get the spike into the sand, but this right here rests on top of the sand and that will slow down the acceleration of how quickly your tripod is sinking into the sand greatly. So these are really, really fantastic for when you're photographing uh, seascapes where you're photographing near uh, sand and the water is moving in and out. You can also use these whenever you're photographing snow as well, because if you're using just the spikes and you go to yeah, well, I should say, if you're using the spikes and you're photographing in deep snow, you go to jam your tripod into the snow, you can easily get your tripod, you know, two or three feet, the tripod legs into the snow, which you really don't want to do. These right here will enable you to get the spikes into the snow. You'll be able to jab this into the snow as well, but it'll keep it from going all the way down to the bottom of the ground. So these are something that, these are the ones that I use the least often, but it's, they, they weigh nothing. And it's a good thing to have in, in your bag if you know you're going to photograph in a snowy situation or you know you're gonna be photographing seascapes. So between the spikes and the claw feet and these right here, the, you pretty much have all the bases covered no matter what surface you're photographing on. You're gonna have a very robust, solution to anchor your tripod to the ground. And I found out to be really, really interesting because even though I've been using those different types of tripod feet on my tripods for years, I never really paid as much attention, uh, paid as much attention to it as I did on that recent workshop because I got so many questions about it. And it really made me realize that a tripod can only be as strong as its anchoring point to the ground. So that's something that I would highly recommend anyone who's only using the rubber feet that the tripod came with. Do a little bit of research online, see if you can pick up some claw feet or some spikes as well. I think you'll be very, very happy with the way that it uh, kind of adds to the overall stability of your tripod setup. Now, I probably shouldn't say this because I'm a Nisi uh, filter ambassador, but it's the honest truth. Using filters a lot of times, it, it, it's a pain. And what I have found that is if you have your filters in your bag and say your bag is on your on the ground and, you, and you're photographing and you need to put on a, a polarizer or maybe a three stop or a, you know, a graduated neutral density filter or whatever the filter is that you want to apply to your setup, if you have to go down in your bag and unzip it and pull it out and put it on your on your camera, you're more than likely not going to do that. You know, if you're just trying to test out and see how the effect is, if it's not something that you know you need and you just want to try it out, you're more than likely not going to uh, to do it. But I have found that I use my filters much, much more often when they are very, very close to me. And I found that this uh, little pouch right here, I use one from F-Stop. And I'll put a link in the description below. Got a lot of questions about this one in a video I, I put out, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago. But it's a, it's a little filter pouch and it's absolutely fantastic. It, attra it attaches to your, your tripod, to your ball head. You can unzip it and then you have all your filters right here. And from my experience, like I said, if you're photographing, you wanna try something out, your filters are right here, you're much more apt to actually use them and it makes it a lot easier to use them as well. And the more often, or I should say the more easy 
it, or should, <laughs> the easier it is to use your filters, the more often you're going to use them. And filters are not cheap, they're expensive, and you want to be able to use them to get your money's worth. But having them right here like this, and you can just pull it out and put it on, take it off, is so, so simple, and it is very nice to have. And the other part, is I've had other little pouches like this before. I like this one the best because it's got a nice long strap and it's easy to attach to it. I've had others that have two attachment points that go to one leg of your tripod to your other leg of your tripod with Velcro. And, and once again, that becomes hard to put to attach it to your tripod. So the easier this will attach to the tripod is also important because then it's the, you're more uh, apt to have it on your tripod. So it's all about the ease of use and how quickly you can uh, get these filters on your camera. And I have found that having a filter pouch attached to your ball head like this that's very simple to use is very, very important. Now I'm not 100% certain about this next one, whether or not it comes with most tripods. It, it has on the tripods that I've used throughout the years, but I did purchase one quite a, quite a long time ago that did not come with these and I'll just unscrew it for mine and show you but it's this right here it's just a little hook that goes beneath the ball head area of your tripod now these are really nice because uh, in extremely windy conditions you can hang things you can add weight to this hook and that's just going to add a little bit of um, additional stability to your tripod and what's cool is you can take a little bungee cord and attach it to this hook and attach that to your camera bag and hang your bag underneath your tripod to where the bag will actually reach the ground. And that's much better than just having your bag attached to this hook and the bag is actually blowing underneath your tripod back and forth because that's gonna, that's gonna make a already bad situation even worse. So, but using these kind of hooks, you can, you can really hang anything from here. It's just gonna add some additional weight to your overall camera and just gonna make the overall stability much, much better. Now, I was a little bit hesitant uh, as to whether or not I should mention this next one, but I have to because it is probably one of the best accessories I've ever purchased for my camera. Now, it's an accessory for your camera. It's not necessarily an accessory for your tripod, but this thing is pretty much worthless without the tripod, and it's, it's an L bracket. This L bracket is absolutely critical. Now, and I, yeah, critical. I don't, I'm not trying to be dramatic. It, it really is that important. Not only does it add protection to your overall camera if you do drop it, you've got protection across the bottom, protection across the side, but it enables you to easily switch from a landscape orientation to a vertical orientation. Not only very, very quickly, but it enables you to not have to roll your ball, your camera over on the uh, on the ball head because that only or that actually changes your overall composition and it makes your tripod extremely lopsided because all the weight is leaning towards one side, which, as you can imagine, makes it very, very unstable. So, a good solid L bracket is very, very important. I used to buy them from Really Right Stuff. They were extremely expensive, like three hundred dollars. This one for my GFX 100S is from Small Rig, and I would highly recommend uh, checking them out. This is not sponsored by Small Rig or anything like that, but this right here, I believe, was 50 or 60 dollars. So much, much cheaper than really right stuff. It fits the camera like an absolute glove, and it's very, very lightweight. So I would highly recommend saving a little bit of cash and checking out Small Rig for a an L bracket that matches the camera that you're using if you already don't have one. But being able to attach this to your camera or to your tripod iPod is very, very important and it'll save you a ton of time when you're out on location as well. So between the tripod feet, the, the claw feet, the spike feet, the spike feet with the, uh, the little saucer on top and the, uh, the filter bag and the hook that goes beneath your, your ball head and the L bracket, those are the tripod accessories that I find to be the most beneficial to, to my workflow. And I think it, they're, that would pretty much help anybody when they're on location. If you're into to outdoor and landscape photography, I can't really see any type of uh, use case where those items would not become uh, beneficial to, to everybody out there. So. If you are uh, looking for something to make your tripod a little bit more uh, secure when you're out on location, or you're looking for an easy way to use your filters, or if you're looking for a, a, an L bracket, I hope that some of the information in this video you will find helpful and uh, maybe give you an idea of something else that you might want to uh, purchase that is a, an accessory-like item specifically for your tripod. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as soon as possible. And I really do uh, hope you enjoyed this week's video. And I just wanted to say uh, I really do appreciate you uh, spending time with me each and every Wednesday checking out these videos. It really does mean a lot, and I will see you all next Wednesday.